you know, I asked the Lord, you know, sometimes demonic activity is raised around you. And before last week, I, I spent the whole week in tears. Y'all know I, I preached about my mother, you're the best thing that ever happened to me. And that whole week, man, I was, I couldn't hardly put one foot in front of the other. I just been, I just been out of it. This week, again, I battled some of the same things, you know, and I, I don't really believe in depression, so I ain't really try to name the thing, but Amen. something's going on with me, just felt resistance. Anybody ever just felt resistance? Just resistance, something on your chest, something on your heart or your mind, and you just feel it, you're holding it. So I consulted the Lord about it, and he said, you know, whenever a blessing is coming, Satan will intensify his attacks. And whispered that in my ear, and then I understood it. So a few days ago, the kingdom of Christ received our fully completed, executed contract on the building. There are no more hindrances, there are no more blockages. We are now on a 60 day countdown to close. The clock has started. Sixty days. Now we we got some money, but we need some more money. Because we ain't trying to just get in there. We trying to get in there right. Can I get a witness? So we got a, a goal that we want to reach before we close. That goal is fifty thousand dollars. If we can raise additional fifty thousand dollars, we won't just fall in there, but we'll go in there strong. The church say amen. amen. And we wouldn't care if God paid the whole building off. Amen. amen. But we'll work with 50,000. The church say amen. amen. Y'all done got quiet on me. Don't get quiet when we start talking about money. Amen. amen. So this thing was on me and God just kind of revealed to me why the devil, why the activity, the enemy was moving. He said because of what's about to occur. The devil knows that we're gonna put the hammer down on the city of Chicago. He knows this. Let's church say amen. We're gonna shake the city up. He knows it. So he got to do whatever he can. If he can't stop it, he gotta to try to slow it down. So I, I, I tossed and turned all night. I think that was yesterday, not, yeah, Friday night. Saturday morning I got up working. Because faith without works is dead. And I started working on this, on this financing. Just me and the computer working. And in three hours, somebody without a name or a face sent us $500. Somebody else sent us $50. And I had six people guarantee me a check for the kingdom of Christ for this building for all of that happened in five hours shake somebody hand and say the hits just keep on coming amen so God is blessing and I want everybody to get involved everybody get involved get engaged in this miracle the Bible say you have not because you ask not. So we have to put the word out there that the kingdom of Christ is doing something and we need the help from the body of Christ. Amen? Amen, amen. amen. Now let me share a word with you. Matthew 19 and 11, say amen when you have it. Amen. And he said unto them, all men cannot receive this saying, 
save they to whom it is given. For there are some eunuchs which were so born from their mother's womb, and there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men, and there be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. Let me go back and read that again, and, and, and trust me, this ain't gonna take too long, but this message here is strong. The 12th verse again says, for there are some eunuchs which were so born from their mother's womb. And there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men. And there be some eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. Bow your heads if you would, Father. Let it be all of you and none of me. In Jesus' name we pray. I want to speak from the thought, the castration and the effeminization of black men. Come on, say that with me. It's a little long, but you can get through it. The castration and the effeminization of black men. I went to a funeral the other day and I noticed something. The girls are turning into boys. And the boys are turning into girls. This is just the eye test. The girls looked harder. Some of them was combat boot down, khakis up to their waist, old plaid shirts on, dark sunglasses, hair cut off, and just walking like men. I looked over at the brothers and the pants was down below the waist draws out. Whoever want to see this here thing I got, here it is. Looking soft and sweet. Can I get a witness? I said to myself, what's happening to us? How is our masculinity and our femininity being switched? How is it you got so many men don't want to be a man anymore, but you got so many girls want to be a man? How is it that males are running away from masculinity and girls are running to masculinity? Now, there already ain't enough men for the women. Can I get a witness? I said this ain't going to take long, but it is strong. There's already a male shortage. Y'all ain't going to say nothing? I would think the women might say something right around here. It's a short, a severe shortage of black men. I'm just saying black men because this is a black congregation and this is what we're dealing with right now. Can I get a witness? So you got beautiful, intelligent, good looking, spiritual, saved, born again women. They look good, they talk good, they smell good, but they ain't got no man. Pickens is slim out here. Some folks sharing. Why can't? Why everybody gotta get? Why y'all got to get on flag? This the kingdom, right? Then we deal with the truth, right? It's a whole lot 
of folk just going on sharing now. I ain't talking about the cheating. <laughs> I'm talking about when you know the deal. Black males, black men, homicide, he's dead now. So that young man is no longer available. Incarceration, he's in jail now. That young man is not available for women. He's on house arrest, he can't come out. So that young man is unavailable for black women. He's on drugs, strung out. Therefore, he's not available for black women. And if incarceration and addiction and homicide wasn't enough to cut the male population down, of the remaining men that's not locked up, haven't been murdered, not strung out on drugs, a growing number now no longer want to be with a female. Their choice, their choice is another man. Did I say it was a shortage already that I go over that part? Bring out the big brother, the big brother football player. Standing 6'5", 285 pounds, solid muscle. His choice. His choice. Little short. He said this, he said this here is what I want. All these beautiful women. He said this, this is my choice. I want to kiss him publicly. I want everybody to know what I'm doing. I don't want to hide it. Then you got the down low. The down low, he wants to per perpetrate. So he married. He even got children. Can I get a witness? <laughs> uh, let me preach this morning anyway. I know it's early, but, and this thing is from the pulpit to the usher board. This thing ain't outside of church. This thing is right up in the midst of the body of Christ. Preachers are working and formulating how to change the Bible in a way to make and cover up this sin and make it acceptable. They studying the midnight hour, flipping the pages, trying to make that which the Lord says is sinful, how to flip it around and make it clean. The Bible said these people call evil good and good evil. They will change the word of God and not believe the word of God, but rather believe a lie. And the Bible said that people are so disobedient that God would give them great delusion that they would believe a lie and not the truth. That comes from the hardness of their hearts. Can I get a witness? Can I preach just a little bit this morning? For the time will come when men will not endure sound doctrine, but will heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And if the price is right, you can get somebody to say anything to you. Because a lot of preachers would rather be paid and popular than be right. Uh, good, good morning. <laughs> I'd rather be right than rich. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? I would rather have the favor of God than the favor of men. The gospel is not designed to make you comfortable or make you satisfied. The gospel is designed to disturb you and bring you into line with God. You don't need a message that's not going to challenge you. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God, but you need a message to pull you in the right direction, not make you comfortable in the wrong direction. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I said, what, what's, what, what's happening here yes, sir. to the brothers? I'm trying to keep this biblical, y'all. You know, I don't want to be too street. So I keep this biblical. Preach it. How is how is that that a woman has? Ethan, I'm trying to say this nicely as I can. How is that that a woman have? How is that going out of style? Hello? I'm talking to the brothers right now. That ain't good no more. But you said, Brace, that's the best thing that ever happened. <laughs> Hello! Give me a few minutes here. How is that playing out of style? How is that not good? I've been to the, to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and had your psychological makeup reorientated. See, boy, see, like doesn't draw to like. Can I get a witness? Ain't nobody got no key in their hand trying to find another key. When you got a kid, I can't even, I can't even go, I can't even preach up in here this morning. When you get a key in your hand, that key goes somewhere to a lock. Can I get a witness? Two keys ain't opening the door to nothing. That's just nature. Can I get a witness? I see a plug, I get a plug in my hand. When I get a plug in my hand, I'm looking for... That's what makes the light come on. You hear what I'm saying? You ain't got no plug in your hand looking for another plug. So, so, so listen, listen to me now. This scripture here, the Lord was telling the brothers, he was talking to them about marriage. And he said, when you get in this thing, he said, you stay in this thing. And if you try to get out of this thing for anything, saving the cause of fornication. Now, he didn't say fornication was a reason to get out of it. He said that's the only legitimate reason to consider getting out of it. He didn't say get out of it. He said that's the only legitimate reason for you to consider. Because they said when Moses said give her a paper of divorcements, a divorcement and then you can get rid of her. He said Moses said this for the hardness of your heart. But in the beginning it was not so. God made them male and female and said there would be no more two but one flesh. Now that's how things started. Well, when they heard they couldn't get out of this thing, they said, well, is it good for a man just not to marry? Now that's going to bring us to our discussion right now of a eunuch. And a eunuch is a man who is unable 
to copulate, cohabitate, produce with a woman. He's a eunuch. And so what Jesus just said is everybody can't bear the word that I'm about to put on you. There are basically three types of eunuchs. There is the brother, now he's not gay now, but there's a brother who was born that way from his mother's womb. Y'all gonna stay with me now? He don't have no desire for no woman. Now that don't mean he desires a man. Don't let your imagination go no place. He is just born and that is not his call in life. He just ain't inclined. There's a few brothers born like that. I ain't one of them. But they do exist. Can I get away? Can we be real? We got to talk now. Now, if that's your calling, then you don't struggle. I said, if that's your calling, then you don't struggle. Ain't no need of y'all trying to act like that's your calling and you struggling. If you struggling, then that's not your call. If you was a eunuch from birth, then the desire is not present with you. Therefore, it's not no struggle. Now there are also eunuchs that have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven. And what does that mean? That means you have taken a vow and pledged yourself not to marry or in any way physically relate to a female so that you might serve God. Shake somebody's hand and say, now don't you fool yourself. Because you know sometimes folk get the Holy Ghost in them, you know. And they, they get the Holy Ghost, I, I don't need no man. I don't need no woman. I just want to serve the Lord. Now here's what Paul said. He said the younger women refuse because after a while they will wax warning and they'll go back on their vow. See, you don't take that vow unless you can follow through on that vow because God has no pleasure in food. So when you make a vow unto the Lord, the Bible says don't fail to keep the vow. Am I preaching to somebody this morning? Do y'all hear what I'm saying? So you don't be talking about I'm a priest or I'm a nun and I'm not going to get none when you know late in the midnight hour you on fire. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? See, you ain't no legitimate eunuch and all them brothers who sleeping with little boys and little girls, y'all ain't no eunuchs because you're still hot. You, you should have got married. You should have had your wife instead of running up on little boys. That thing done perverted in you. See, let me tell you something. Don't you let somebody else put you in a box that you can't bear. You got to seek God for yourself. And if you're a man that's supposed to be married to a woman, then look for a wife. If you a woman that's supposed to be married to a man, I don't say look for, but be available. <laughs> Let me preach this thing. You don't, you, ain't, you don't get it like this too many places. You got to get your nose out the air. Huh? Ain't your nose out there and calm, calm down. I don't say a lot of silly stuff that you hear in church. If that's not your calling, Jesus is not your man. If that's not your calling, Jesus is not your man. Not like that. Can I get a witness? You'll find yourself falling and backsliding and getting back up and falling and backsliding, getting back up. Can I get a witness? It's a eunuch. 
he said, made themselves that for God, and that means you've taken a vow to serve the Lord. And therefore you marry the church. See, the unmarried woman is free to serve the Lord with no conditions because she doesn't have a husband. So that means she can do whatever she wants to do for the church. She can go and come. Pastor said, go, I'm, I'm ready, I'm going. So we, in revival all week, she said, I'm there, okay? The married woman has always considered her husband. Can I get a witness? She can't commit like that because she's got a covering. And even if she makes a vow, her husband can establish the vow or he can disavow the vow. Can I get a witness? And you got to make sure that if you married, you got to make sure that you don't put your work for the Lord above your husband, thinking that you're doing a godly. Boy, this thing get rough here, but not. See, when you, when you marry, the pastor is not your number one man. Your number one man is your husband. So even when you're dealing with the pastor, there's a filter because your ministry is always connected to your house. Can I get a witness? Now, now there's another type of eunuch. This is a eunuch that's been made a eunuch by men. Mean he's been physically castrated. This is what the king would do to some brothers. Physically castrate them so he could trust them to God, his wife. So this eunuch is usually a bad chamber God because the, the king did not have to worry about him tipping in on the queen. Because he was fixed. Can I get a witness? So he could be with the queen all day and all night. Because he's a eunuch. And the king could go ahead on with his other wives and go across the country and go where he wanted to go. But he never had to worry about nothing happening to his wife. Because the eunuch was there. Can I get a witness? The eunuch meaning unable, the inability to reproduce. But a eunuch is not just a physical phenomenon. Eunuch also means your mentality. Some men have been made eunuchs. In other words, they have been castrated. They have been fixed. So even though they're in the form of a man, they can't stand up like a man and they can't speak like a man because somebody has removed the male part from them. They just don't have no. They've been removed. So he's in the house, but he's not a man in the house. He's in the neighborhood, but he's not a man in the neighborhood. He's absent. He got the physical body, but he does not have the mental makeup to be a man. He has been castrated and effeminized. Let me preach here for a minute. Sister, you got to be very careful. You don't participate in the castration of your man. Let your man be a man and quit trying to cut off his... You don't want your man to be minus. You don't want him to be no eunuch. You want him to be able to stand up. You see how everything worked together? You want him to be able to stand up like a man. You don't want to get in the bed with what? With you. Can I get a witness? You want a man stand up like a man. Well, he can't stand up like a man in bed if he can't stand up like a man in the living room and in the kitchen and when it comes to taking care of business. If you want him to be a man, he got to stand up and sometimes that means telling you to sit down. Sometimes means telling you, hold your peace, baby. Sometimes means telling you, you need to be quiet and listen up. If he's going to be a man, he got to step into the role of a covering. 
and whether you know it or not, you still need to be covered because you will take things a little too far. Now you don't hear many preachers that will tell you that to your face because you will take things too far. Let me, let, me, let me say this thing. Deacon Hover, let me say this thing. Israel was in Egypt. And, and, and this, this is what y'all need to catch. Young boys that's in here. Zeb and Eki and all oh, y'all, you need to catch this. The king said, the people are multiplying. Do y'all remember when we used to just have a lot of babies? Can we talk? I, 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 I don't need but a few more minutes. Do y'all remember that? You ever ask your mom how many sisters and brothers they had, your grandma? Remember, remember them numbers you used to hear? 16, 9, 12, it was 18 of us. Do y'all remember that? Well, this was what was happening in Israel. The harder the people work, the more they multiply. Can I get a witness? Yes, because see, if you couldn't do nothing down south, if you... You understand what I'm saying? If they wasn't good at nothing else. Down there eating them greens. Can I get a witness? They were some men and they were some women. And they made a generation. They made babies. Mama was having her last baby and her oldest daughter was old enough to have her baby. Can I get a witness? Mama was still rolling. That's one daughter 20 and a brand new baby. Huh? And don't mention granddad. Huh? Granddad was still. When mama got tired and wasn't naughty, kept moving. Can I get a witness? So it'd be a whole nother little set. Can I preach? Let, let's just talk real. That there's one set, they older. But then there's a whole nother little set over here. Them some little bitty kids. Can I get a witness? Can I, because daddy was still building the house and he was still able to be a house. He might have been a lot of things, but one thing he wasn't going to be is a eunuch. He could produce. Now, understand something here. When they said the people are multiplying, they said if they join with another enemy, they can overcome us. Here's the plan. When you do the office of the midwife and the babies are coming into the world, if it's a boy, kill him immediately. That's in your Bible. If it's a girl, let her live, but the male is a threat. The male is a threat to the power structure. If he grows, he one day will become dissatisfied with his lot in life and he will challenge me. I would rather deal with the women. I would rather sleep with them. I would rather have children by them. And that way those babies will have a divide, divided loyalty because they'll be the children of the slave master and, and their mother will be a slave. They'll be conflicted about it. But I got to stop the male population from growing because a male, every male represents a generation. And I gotta stop them from growing. So even today, right now, right now, today in Chicago, there is somebody who is particularly under threat. And that threat is that young black boy. He is 
got a target on his back. He can't hardly function in school. He can't find a job. He can't work. Everything is, fo is focused on destroying him mentally and physically. Now they got his pants pulled down around his ankles. He can't work. He can't get a job. He don't know how to be a man. They are castrating him. Humiliating him. And he don't have the knowledge or the wisdom to how to resist the pressures that are coming on here. Can I get a witness? Go ahead. Go ahead. We got to understand what we're fighting. And once we recognize that that's where the war is, then we got to combat the war. Now how do you combat the war? So the Bible said my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Yes, so the only way to go against this brother Reggie is we got to get wisdom and knowledge into our young men yeah. so that they understand what it is to be a man. Yeah, sure. Can I get a witness? Yeah. You want to hear something crazy? Ask your son what it takes to be a man. That's a simple question. Right. Just ask him. Because if you're not careful, he'll tell you I am a man. Yeah. I'm a man now. Mm -hmm. So, but if you ask him, what? does it take to be a man? Now Paul said, when I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I acted like a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Ask your son, what does it require? What's the requirement to be a man? At what point, son, do we classify you as a man? Because you can have a baby, that don't make you a man. Because you got a pistol, that don't make you a man. So what does it take? Can I get a witness? Yes, sir. Oh, I told y'all some time ago, the Lord told me, when you got a problem, you go back to Genesis. You always look at the original intent. So let's just do this right quick and then I'll, I'll just close on off and I'll talk a little bit, a little bit more later. Amen. And go back to the original intent. Let us. Let us make man. How? What's the model? Make him like what? We made the cow after the cattle kind. We made the bird after the bird kind. We made everything in a pattern after itself. Now, let us make man. How? What is the model of a man? What do we look at? What are we going to gauge by the man? Do we make him like unto the dog? No, we don't want him to be a dog. We make him into the cat? No, we don't want him to be a cat. I won't say the other word. We, how do we make it? In our own image. Make him after our likeness. The measure of a man is God. The measure of a man is God. The design of a man and the intent of a man is to be like God. Whatever God is, is what a man was called to be. And whatever God is not, a man was not called to be that. So if you want to really be a real man, you got to be a man who is like unto God. Now, what are the attributes and the characteristics of God? What is God? How do, we, how do we judge whether I'm getting close to God? Is God a man of his word? If God says something, does he absolutely do what he say he gonna do? Bible said God is not a man that would lie or a lying man, but every word he speaks, he speaks the truth. And so the foundation of manhood is to speak the truth. 
and to do what you say you're going to do. Can I get a witness? That's the strength of a man. Y'all know old school men. If they tell you they're going to do something, show sure going to do it. Anybody here married or, or been around or was raised by old school man? A father? Can I get a witness? Word was born. Can I get a witness? So you measure manhood by the respectability of a man's word. Now this might hurt some feelings up in here, brother, but I'm going to tell you, you can't be no man and be a liar. Now I didn't say we ain't never lied, but you can't be in the image and likeness of God and be known as a liar. Made us in his image. And he gave us a woman. My God. Not good for man to be alone. I will make him a woman. Put them together. Shake somebody's hand and say, this is God's business. Man and woman get together, that's God's business. Can I get a witness? He ain't bring no, no Fred or Bartholomew out and say, Adam, look at here what I got. He ain't bring no Robert or Bill out here and say, look, Adam, I got you some Adam. and say, I don't want that. But he brought him out, a woman. And Adam said, yeah, bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh, she shall be called woman. And he said there will be no more two but one flesh. So the measure of a man, then he says unto Adam and Eve, be fruitful and multiply. The measure of a man is to be fruitful and multiply. Not just physically multiply, but spiritually multiply. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Have dominion and have rule. We're talking about the makings of a man and what makes him a man. And a real woman can only respect a man when he's producing. It's something about a man who ain't producing that just turns a woman off. He got to be productive. He got to produce. He got to multiply. He got to have dominion. He got to oversee. So when a brother steps to you, you need to find out, do you want sex or do you want a partner? Do you want sex or are you looking for somebody to help you master the earth? Because Eve's purpose was to help Adam rule over the earth. You need a man not with just height and weight, but you need a man with a mentality to govern and to control and to have power. And then you got to be a woman who can support a powerful man. You got to be, Lord, let me preach this time. You got to be so secure in yourself as a woman that you don't want to be no man and you ain't trying to be no man, but you looking for a good man. This uh, is what God Amen. calls us to be. Can I get a witness? Amen. We have to grow into the man that God wants us to be. And that takes wisdom. Can I get a witness? It takes, it takes an understanding. You, you can't prove manhood by how many women you sleep with because that don't prove nothing. You can't prove manhood by cussing folk out. You can't prove manhood by going upside the head of your wife or your woman or abusing her. You don't prove you the man because I can knock you down. Can I get a witness? That's not no proof. I challenge you prove your manhood. Just be a man of your word. Can I get a witness? You ain't got to get physical, just stand. Can I get a witness? It's something about a man who knows how to stand. It motivates a woman to get in her place if you just stand where you ought to be. It's kind of hard to get in your spot if you're in there. Can I get a witness? If, if you're standing there, it's kind of hard for to get in the spot. But if you keep getting out of pocket and out of step, somebody going to slip into the place where you're supposed to be. And once you get her in there, she get comfortable being in there, and now she don't want to move. Uh, 
And if this devil is successful, he'll take all of the manhood out the males. And we'll get soft as butter and weak as water. And you'll be looking for a man and they won't be very hard to find because they'll all be with other men. See, understanding that the male psychology, understanding a man, when you find a man emulating a woman, he's not just a regular woman, he's like over-feminized. Can I get a witness? He don't just look like a woman, he look more feminine. Can I get a witness? He don't, he not just soft, He's like extra soft. Huh? Well, where's, where's this coming from? How does he, how does he know? See, yeah, daddy. How, how does he know to go there? <laughs> you see, because he's, he's the invert of the psychology. He's the invert of the psychology of the male. So he get real submissive. He get places you can't get your wife to go. And he goes there without being told why. Because he's the opposite of what you are, but he knows what you are. So he turns himself into the full expression of femininity even more so than the woman does. So I don't know about you. Brothers, but I'm going to keep mine. I'm, I'm getting ready to go now, huh? But Donnell, I'm, I'm going to be like Joshua. <laughs> As for me and my house, can I get a witness? I'm going to keep my manhood. I'm going to stay a man. Can I get a witness? I, I'm not going to be a lord or tempted. You're not going to seduce me into thinking I should be something less than a man. Can I get a witness? If you're a man, you ought to stand on man principles, which really means to stand on God's principles. You ought to be the protector and the provider of the community. Can I get a witness? It ain't no question if you run up in here on me, it ain't no question who gonna die first. You got to come through me before you get to the women and the children. I'm a man. I'm not conflicted. If you come to my house at three o'clock in the morning, you got to contend with me. And my wife up there protecting the babies. You got to deal with me. I know my role. We got to maintain, brothers. We got to maintain. Stop being such a punk. Can I get a witness? You say, well, I can't tell my wife nothing. No, you can tell her something. She might not listen, but you can tell her something. Can I get a witness? Which means you ought to speak. If she don't do it, that's her business. Can I get a witness? That's between her and her God. But if she's doing something she shouldn't be doing and you refuse to speak, then that's on you. Can I get a witness? You got to speak up like a man. You got to conduct yourself like a man. And this is the call that God has placed on us. Bow your heads if you would. Lord, we ask your blessings right now. You place us in the positions we need to be. Give us the understanding of what it is that you have made us how you made us to be. Give us comfortability in the role that you have given us. For this world has created confusion. But Lord, you're not the author of confusion, but you're the author of peace. So we speak peace today in the family of God. We speak order because you are decent and you are in order. If you're anything at all, you're decent. You're not indecent. You don't behave yourself unseemly. 
but you behave yourself and you teach us to behave ourselves in an upright manner. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Those of the churches open.